Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, I am going to be touching on the RSL helper tool that you see right here because uh, it is definitely the most common question I get when I am live streaming 10 to 25 times a day is, hey, what is that tool over there uh, that you are using during your stream and that, that shows your roster and everything? So I have not explored this topic on my channel for four or five months. I wanted to get you an updated guide, uh, just kind of the basics of how to use this tool, what it is, and just kind of give you the intro to it if you are looking to use it while playing Raid on the PC so that you know what you are getting into. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so first of all, uh, a few things we got to get out of the way uh, in, in terms of talking about third-party software. There's always some questions that come up. Uh, first of all, I did not make this tool, so do not give me credit for it. Uh, it is actually Farbstoff RSL who makes this tool. I will link to the channel in their Discord server where you can get the most recent version of it. I can actually pull it up right here. So this is going to be now uh, Farbstoff's main language is not English, but uh, I do speak English with him uh, pretty often. He does a great job. I, I give him feedback on the tool and uh, is always willing to help me. Super nice guy. So I do talk to him a lot personally. Uh, but just, you know, the Discord server, uh, the main language is typically not English. But that is the channel. And then there is the link right down there to get the most recent uh, version of it. And I believe they are working on a website type place where you can get the most recent link. And also, I am literally today, like this weekend, in the process of completely redoing ChoFlyElite.com version 2.0, a whole new look and a whole new concept. I will have a section on there pretty soon once I get everything ironed out and up and rolling where you can get the most recent version. And also, since I did not make this software, uh, it's important to note that you are going to have to decide individually on what third-party software you would like to install on your computer or not. So that is up to you to do that research and kind of manage your computer how you would like to. Then lastly, a lot of people are always curious about, are you at risk of getting banned? <laughs> Obviously, none of us want to lose our Rage Shadow Legends account uh, or, or you just get insta-banned for, for using third-party software while you're playing or anything. Uh, and all I can tell you is I would never use something or promote something on my channel if Plarium's stance was publicly that they are going to ban for it. So I am in the official content creator program for Rage Shadow Legends, and I am completely open about using this tool. They watch my stream, they watch my videos, and they have never said a word to me about this not being okay. I have expressed permission from them to use the RSL helper tool. So you are okay to use it. I can definitely assure you of that. Because I would never personally use anything that would risk getting me banned, then I would certainly never promote anything to you on my channel that would risk getting you banned. But now that we have got some of the important stuff to talk about and get out of the way right up front, let's dive into the fun stuff and talk about why I use this tool and what it is so amazing about it. And then also some quick pointers for you if you download it and you start using it so that maybe you won't be so lost and take weeks to figure out what is going on. I'll walk you through the different tabs really quick and help you understand why it's so great and how to kind of use it as an intro. So first up is this auto clicker screen, and that is going to be the first thing that pops up. The, on the left side here is your menu, and this is kind of the main screen, this auto clicker screen. This is where what is going to be showing your team during your run. This will update uh, while you are in your dungeon run, faction wars, whatever you are in, clan boss team. It will load up your team, and it will show you the information right there. But I do also want to point out when you launch... Uh, the, the RSL Helper and Rage Shadow Legends, the way I do it, the way I have found best is to completely close everything Rage Shadow Legends related and then launch the RSL Helper tool as administrator. And then if you've got it installed properly on your computer, when you launch the RSL Helper tool, it will automatically load Raid for you. So all I do is I have Plarium Play open and logged in, but I do not have Raid Shadow Legends open. Then I run the RSL Helper tool as administrator, and then it loads Raid for me. It will not be automatically integrated right away. You may see some of the stats are off and, and things may be in red or something. So uh, do like a campaign run or do a free like Dungeon Tower key or Faction Wars key and then leave and then play again. And usually by the second run, uh, if everything is launched correctly, it will have everything fully integrated and ready to go. 
So yeah, this is the main tab, and it's showing the last team that I was using for one of the bosses in the Doom Tower. I believe it was the Nether Spider. So uh, you, you'll get you'll get a lot of the basic breakdown of your different champions here. You, uh, and this this continues to evolve. Uh, Farb stuff is incredible. Like uh, I will literally say something to him, like, "Hey, it'd be kind of cool if underneath the portraits on each champion, it showed the current set bonuses of their gear." And he was like, "Oh, okay, cool." And then literally like. 12 hours later, it was done. And then I was like, hey, it'd be kind of neat if you could see if the champion is booked or not. Uh, if you if you put that on their little information card, boom, the next day it was done. So uh, Farmstoff does a great job of listening, of listening to feedback. So by the way, if you have any feedback down in the comment sections, I will be happy to forward that to him the next time I speak to him about some changes to make all this a little bit better. But yeah, as it stands right now, you've got the portrait and then the current set bonuses that champion has, then the name of that champion, and then it's got the health, uh, the attack, defense, then speed, and it's highlighted because speed is usually the most important stat. So it's got the, the boot icon highlighted in blue, then resistance, and then accuracy at the bottom. And then over on the right side of the champion's card, it will have the current books, it will have the maximum, and then how many they currently have towards their skills. And then down below that is the three different tiers of masteries. So if the bottom 950 is full red, that means the champion is fully mastered up in the Minotaur. And all of this will update live once you've done a run or two to get it integrated if you launched everything properly. Uh, you can see here that I will do a Spider 20 run because it's super fast, so it's good for a video. And you will see how the RSL Helper, all that stuff over there on the right side, will update as soon as I hit play. Boom, and there it loads my Spider 20 team. I can see all of those stats instead of the stats that were displayed just a second ago from the last team that I used in the Doom Tower. And, um, and I'll show you here in a second, you can set it up to auto do this, and then you can set parameters as to which items it will sell for you at the end of the run, and then keep going and playing for you. Which, like I said earlier, there's a lot to cover. This video could be an hour, but I'm gonna try my best to scoot through the uh, basics here really quick for you. So uh, we won't dive into like auto swapping food and everything in the campaign, but you can play around with some of these mechanics as you get familiar with the tool. So uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, like the most important thing to know, is how to have this thing run dungeons for you. That's the first thing I want to make sure I cover uh, but, and make sure that you have ironed out. So the way I do it, the way it works best for me is I'm going to go to my dungeon. So we, if we go under the battle tab, we go to dungeon and then I'm going to go, let's do spider because spider 20 is fast for the video and boom, this is the screen that you want to be on. Let me make this a little bit smaller. This is the screen you want to be on uh, when you are going to have the auto clicker take over for you. The one where it shows the stage up there and you can build the team. And then on the bottom right, you can click start to start the run. This is the screen you want to make sure you're on before you get this thing kicked off. And then right here, when you're going to start the run up top, you can either set how many runs you want it to do. Let's say maybe I just collected a, a big tournament reward or something, and I've got a thousand energy. Maybe I don't want to spend all of it in the spider. Maybe I only want it to do 20 runs. You can actually put in the 20 right there. And then when you click play down here, it will count down. It will show you it'll go 20, 19, 18, and then it will just run the 20 runs and stop. But you can also leave that blank if you just put that at zero. And what I like to do is, is if I'm going to like run it overnight or something, I'm going to just go to bed. I want to wake up with zero energy. You can check this run effective energy. And what that will do is all the energy you've got up there, it will just run it out and then it will wait until you accumulate more and go again. So uh, well, let's say it runs me to zero. Then as soon as I hit 16 energy, like I'm sleeping or something, boom, it will trigger to start another run. And then down here, this is a ridiculously cool feature, is the auto sell artifacts. And you can customize this by clicking sell option right here. So uh, I'll show you, this is how I have mine set up, but keep in mind, you know, I'm a level 100 account. You may want to keep more than I am, but I've got it set to sell all, anything that is not five stars, obviously gonna get automatically sold. I don't really ever get four star drops from dungeons once you're up past like level 19, 20 and that type of stuff. But uh, I set it to sell all five star epics. So if it's a five star legendary, I may wanna at least keep it and see what it is. So whatever you set here is going to get sold. So it, let's say you wanna keep five star epics, you would set this to five star rare and then it's gonna sell everything, including five star rare and after that it will stop. So I wanna keep five star legendaries. So I set this to five star epic. I'll at least take a look at them. Maybe, maybe they'd be good if they 
triple roll speed or something. I want to take a look at that. And then for six stars, I keep everything that is at least epic or legendary. I don't want to keep rares. So I set this to six star rare and it will sell all the rares, but it will keep the epics and the legendaries on those six stars so I can at least take a look at them. And then over towards the left side, you've got other parameters you can set up as well, revolving around like flat stats and different type of stuff. So sell all HP, flat artifacts, attack, defense. I've got that checked. If it's got a flat stat, boom, I don't need to see it. Get rid of it. When you're end game, you don't want flat stats on gear. Uh, then selling uh, attack stat amulets is very common because obviously attack amulets are by far the least uh, desirable because any champion that has high attack that wants to do a lot of damage is going to want a crit damage amulet. It'd be a very rare exception like a like a War Mother build or a Lord Shazar trying to get uh, li like a lot of value out of bombs or something. So it's, it's super niche and very rare. Most people like to just sell all flat attack stat amulets. And then uh, you can keep... All banners with accuracy. Accuracy is typically the uh, the highest priority of main stat on banners. So if you'd like to, you can check that to at least take a look at all of your accuracy banners. And then, like, there's other things going on here, but you get the gist. You can set a lot of these different parameters in here and have the auto sell feature be exactly how you want it to be. So I would say when I am going to auto farm a dungeon, this is what it's going to look like 99% of the time. I'm just going to check run effective energy. I'm going to check auto sell artifacts, make sure that it's got, I've got my sell options, how I want them to go. And then I'm at this screen right here and I just click play, make this a little bit smaller and I'll show you exactly what is going on here. So just those two things checked. My cell parameters set. I'm at the right screen. I click play. Now uh, you'll see at the end of the run, uh, I did spider so that it goes super fast. You'll see at the end of the run, uh, it will check those parameters on the, the artifact that drops. In this case, it's an accessory. It will check the parameters I have set and then it will decide if it wants to keep it for me to review it or if it's just going to auto scrap it and keep going. So right there is a five-star rare. It's going to cut it loose. So you'll see it, boom, boom, sell, and then replay. So it will do this until all of my energy is gone, and then it will stop and wait for more energy to accumulate. Then when I wake up in the morning or whatever, I would just come to my computer and click stop, and then it would be done doing it. And if you do it during the middle of the run, it's totally fine. It just means that now it's, it's totally stopped. It's not going to auto sell or anything. Now it's up to me to look at it because I stopped it in the middle of the run. Now there is another thing I want to make sure and show you because this is insane for like clan versus clan or whatever you want to do a bunch of forging. Uh, you can use this to auto forge for you and it will even sell based on the parameters that you have set under the sell options for auto sell artifacts. So the way I like to do it is make sure I've got the set selected that I want to do. In this case, we'll just do some re uh, resilience pieces here for the video. And then you type under the number of runs how many pieces you want it to craft. So we'll just do five for the video. And then you can leave run effective energy checked. You can leave auto sell artifacts if you want it to automatically just trash the ones based on your parameters. Then make sure you check auto forge. A lot of people forget to do that and they wonder why I, I did everything right. I click play. It's not doing the forge. Make sure you check that auto forge button. And then boom, when we click play, you can see now it is going to forge for me and it's going to sell right there. That one was trash, so it sold it. And you can see it's counting down. Now it's at three. Now it goes to two. And it is selling based on the parameters of what the forge is building. And it shows the little rotating uh, spindle down there that it's playing right now. Now it says zero, which means that's the last one. It sells the artifact and boom, it is done. It automatically did those five runs that I plugged in for it to do. But that's not all with this main screen. It actually goes a little bit more in depth yet. Uh, when you are live in a dungeon, right now I'm running a Fire Knight, and this is my Fire Knight team that's got loaded in right there. You can actually click on each individual icon if you want to see a full breakdown of that specific champion in your build. So boom, I can click on Lysandra, and now I get the full blown up page of exactly what is going on with that Lysandra. I can see the pieces in detail, the full stats break down, the mastery is over on the right, and then I can click this little back button to go back to that main screen where it shows my whole team. So you can kind of click through these and keep tabs and everything while you're in your run. A super handy thing, especially for like, faction wars when you've got so many different champions you're trying to keep track of what's going on uh you can kind of have this up while you're doing faction wars and it helps you keep track of uh different things going on and even if someone is missing gear it will outline their champion card in red so that happens a lot obviously in faction wars or secret rooms or whatever you'll end up using a piece someone else was wearing for something else you were prioritizing well, if you've got this open, it will outline them in red and show you like, oh yeah, I took that piece off of Doom Priest. I got to go ahead and fix my Night Rev team. So that will have that highlighted for you and you can kind of keep tabs on it.
then before we move on from this main screen, uh, by the way, over on the far right on the blind seer, a lot of people ask what that little box means above the uh, the legendary books you see on the right side. That little box means that that champion is currently in the vault. So that's a question that comes up a lot. But uh, I do want to touch on the FPS section down here on the bottom. So uh, you can do 10... 60, 144, and I, I know a lot of people out there have 144 hertz monitor and like the 140, uh, 144 FPS option, or the U is unlimited. So you can kind of pick what you're, you want your default to be. And then this box here for check auto detection is ridiculous. It's so good. When you go in to upgrade artifacts, it will detect that uh, it needs to lower the FPS, which will make your game upgrade artifacts like five times faster. And you can breeze through those artifact upgrades. I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go in here and let's pick something that we want to upgrade to level 16. Sure, why not? Let's do this one for the video. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you can see what I'm doing. And then when I click on upgrade, it has now dropped the FPS to 10. You can see over there that I had it on 144 before, and now right there it shows that it is switched to 10 FPS. So without me doing anything, it auto-detected that I am on the artifact upgrade screen, and it adjusted it for me so that now when I get this set to do upgrades, boom, it's flying through them. Five times faster than normal, you're able to upgrade artifacts without even having to click anything. It's going to automatically detect that, and then when you exit that screen, it will flip it back to the setting that you had, which for me was 144 FPS. And as soon as this uh, the, the stubborn piece finally hits 16 here, there we go, triple speed for the video. Boom, good omen, here we go. And now when I back out of that screen, you'll see this 10 right there, flip over to 144 right now. There it is, it flipped over as soon as I closed that screen. So without you having to do anything, it will just automatically manage it for you and help you upgrade faster. And since this video is already getting kind of long, I try my best to be quick and concise and to the point for you guys. Uh, so that's the most of the main stuff I wanted to make sure you knew. Uh, but quickly, I'll show you the other tabs. There is a clan boss simulator. Um, huge props to, to, to Farmsoft for having this on there. Uh, full disclosure, I have not used this. Um, my good friend Deadwood Jedi has an amazing site and an amazing clan boss resource. I've gotten used to using that. So that's what I use for the clan boss simulations I do. But super cool that this tool has it integrated in there uh then we've also got tools right here you have got a uh a, an offer calculator i have one of my own i have run through and used this a few times and i can uh vouch for this offer calculator i think it's pretty good uh it's pretty consistent with the the values that i have on my uh offer sheet uh i but like do do remember that the normal one is in euro so if you're using us dollar that's something to keep in mind when you're playing around with this and then this is super cool this is a super uh under utilized or underappreciated resource of this tool which is the accuracy resistance compare you can see uh so in in dungeon 20 the dragon is going to have 200 resistance so now i'm able to figure out how much accuracy do i need what if i have the same if i'm at 200 accuracy okay i'm at 92.5 percent so what if i bump it up to 220 okay i got about three more percent what if i went all the way up to 300 oh i barely get anything more for that okay so the optimal looks like it's about 230 that's really where i start getting super diminishing returns okay so you can use that to really build effective champions you have the accuracy and resistance comparison chart right there for you to use at your disposal then below that, on the left side, we've got the champion index. So this is going to be where you can type in champions that you want to pull up. Uh, remember our Lysandra we had pulled up. I can type in Lysandra and boom, there you go. You've got Lysandra on your account. It will show you also if you have duplicates of that champion. And then it will help you uh, see which one is the main one because it shows you the stats breakdown as well. There is an event tracker tab that I have not really played around with a whole lot. So I'm not an expert on this event tab. That can be something you can kind of play around with in terms of an event tracker for you. And then the shard tracker. Uh, Plarium changed how the game is coded. So this does not really, it works pretty wonky. Uh, this was amazing. Such such an amazing thing back when it worked. But, uh, but yeah, this is probably not going to be functioning properly because how the game codes uh, the, the different shards and how it tracks them doesn't really integrate with this tool anymore. So unfortunately, the shard tracker is is not really going to work for you anymore. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And then below that is some settings to go ahead and play with right here. Uh, pretty self-explanatory stuff. Uh, the standard FPS value, the user FPS. Uh, yeah, you can kind of uh, play around with some of the settings down there on the bottom. So that covers most of what I want to get out there right now 
for the RSL Helper Tool, why it's amazing, and some of the basics that you need to know about it. Remember, I'm going to have the link down below to Farbsoft's tool, and I'll also try to uh, include the most recent download link down there as well, nice and easy for you to find. Now, if you are having uh, some like troubleshooting issues or install installation issues, it works smoothly for me. So it's not my tool. I'm not an expert at uh, like helping you in terms of tech stuff to get it working on your computer. But remember, I've got the link for Discord right down there and you can post in the bug reports or seek out help on Farbsoft's Discord. He's super nice and I'm sure those resources, resources are going to be available for you. So that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.